Today we'll be looking at a portion of the upper limb. The upper limb is divided into multiple parts, shoulder, the arm, the forearm and the hand. In front of you, you see the right hand. Now, when it comes to spotting, the first thing, as I mentioned before, is that you must orient yourself. What side is the specimen from? Is it from the right side or the left side? Seeing this in front of you, just by noticing the thumb, you should easily be able to appreciate that this is the right hand, which means that this side, the bony prominence you see here, is the radial bone, while the ulna is on the other side. You can see these two bones here. Notice you have the radius here, and it's quite larger. That's because the distal length of the radius enlarges and forms a styloid process. That's why it's much larger there, while the ulna narrows down. This is the opposite near the proximal end, where the size of the ulna is much bigger due to the olecranian process. Now, with this in front of you, let's see what are the possible spots where they can mark. The most prominent thing you may notice are these tendons. Normally, all the tendons pass through a flexor retinaculum. The flexor retinaculum here is disrupted, that's why you not, cannot see it. But if I were to pick one tendon like so, you can see how this tendon, as it ascends upwards, it splits at the top point. And notice at that split, another tendon is passing underneath this. Remember, remember, whenever you see this split, this means that this tendon belongs to the flexor digitorum superficialis. And there are about three more tendons part of this. Here I'm holding another one, which is going to the ring finger. Here is the one which is going to the middle finger. And the other ones are right over here. Here's another one going to the index. The pinky one as well. I have one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. All of these reach the four digits and they split at this point. Let us use a pin to demarcate where the split is. Anything above this split, that tendon, what you see there, that tendon belongs to the flexor digitorum profundus. It lies deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis. From this point, if I were to avert all these muscles, you can see how on the deep end, you can see this common tendinous uh, origin here. You can see how these tendons are splitting at this point. This is the flexor digitorum profundus. And you can see how they ascend upwards and they pass through the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon. I'm gonna put a big green mark here just to show you where the flexor digitorum profundus is. It's deeper to the two. One of the interesting things is that between these two muscles is the passage of the median nerve. The median nerve will be difficult to appreciate because of its thinness, but here you can see one of its fibers going to the index finger. As I said, it passes between the two muscles and then divides to supply one, two, three and a half part of the hand. So this is your medial nerve. On this side, you will see small branches of the ulnar nerve. Again, very difficult to appreciate because of the thinness of the nerve. But if I were to just avert this, here you can see is the ulnar nerve. So the medial nerve on the thumb side and the ulnar nerve on the pinky side. Here are the two nerves. In between, we can see there is a reddish structure. And you can see how it's forming a bit of an arch. What you see here is the superficial palmar arch and I'm passing a needle through this and this arch try to make sure it's still visible is actually the continuation of the ulnar artery from the ulnar side as it forms the arch it will then anastomose with the radial artery near the thumb side from this superficial palmar arch you can see how you have these metacarpal arteries extending outwards upwards here you can see one of them passing upwards here's I'm passing a pin through this one. Here we go. It's a bit difficult because of its. Uh, there's nothing underlying it, so that's why we cannot pass one. Here we go. Now, from the superficial palmar arch to the metacarpal arteries, we then come to the common digital arteries, which will then form the proper digital arteries. Basically, they're just an extension of the metacarpal artery and they're going alongside the fingers to supply it. This is the, basically the arterial supply of the fingers. 
Now, let's remove all of these things so that I can show you the deeper structures. The deeper structures are mostly your lumbrical muscles. So removing the palmar arch and the tendons, you can see that between the fingers, there is actually a group of muscles. And these muscles are originating from the flexor jitorum profundus. Those muscles which are demarcated with this white pen, those ones are the lumbricals. The lumbricals are part of the flexor jitorum profundus, they originate from that, and they insert to the lateral aspect of the metacarpal bones. So the lumbricals are the main flexors. If I were to demonstrate on my hand how the muscles work, this movement right here is how the lumbricals work. The flexor digitorum superficialis is how this movement occurs. While the profundus is basically your digital movement of the last pelvix. Difficult to appreciate, but these are the three movements done by these muscles. What else can we see here? On this side, we have the tinar eminence. And in the tinar eminence, we can see all the muscles related with the thumb. We can see the abductor pollicis brevis right over here and right in the medial side we can see the opponents pollicis and here below we can see the flexor uh, pollicis here we see the abductor pollicis brevis this is the flexor pollicis brevis you can see how it's split apart right over here and here we have the opponents pollicis right underneath Keep in mind, abduction is moving the fingers outwards like this, while the flexor is moving it towards the inside, like so. Opposition is done in this manner. So, similarly, on the hypotenar side, and this is more destroyed, but you can still see the abductor digiti minimi on the lateral most aspect. This time, the opponence is medially, while the flexor digiti minimi is right underneath. And see, it's covering the last metacarpal bone. So we have seen the tenar eminence and the hypotenar eminence. The only other thing worthwhile mentioning are the other tendons attaching to the carpal bones. Just remember the ones near the radial side are the flexor carpi radialis, while the one near the ulnar side is the flexor carpi ulnaris. If we're going to go even further back, then I'll be coming towards the extensor carpi ulnaris. Turning this around, you can see then the back side, the dorsum of the hand. Over here, the first and most important thing to note is this thing, the snuff box. The snuff box is actually composed of three different tendons, two which are located more laterally and one medially. The medial most is the extensor pollicis longus, while here we have the extensor pollicis brevis, one which is more laterally. And here we have the abductor pollicis longus. Remember, the abductor pollicis brevis was right over here, the short one. The longer one is on the back side. And even if we pull it, you can see how the thumb, how that's moving in the abduction position. In this snuff box, we can see a portion of the radial artery passing through. The same artery coming from the radial side and also anastomosing with the superficial palmar arch. So we have the radial artery over here. Here we can see a nice extensor retinaculum covering all the tendons. The flexor retinaculum looks very similar in the front, but as I said, it was disrupted. But this is your extensor retinaculum. From here you can see the extensor digitorum going back. One of them, which is going to the index, extensor indexes, and the little one right over here going to the pinky, this one, is the extensor digiti minimi. They all are part of the same group, all extensor digitorum. This uh, extensor retinaculum from here on, these tendons, the tendons then expand to form the dorsal digital expansion. Again, quite disrupted, but you can see a bit of these fibers. These are the fibers of the dorsal digital expansion. Think of them as a hood covering the head, like those hooded jackets. So they're covering the knuckles over here. And lastly, the muscles you see right over here. If the deep muscles in the front were the lumbricals, these ones you see on the back side are the introsci muscles. The introsci are located between the metacarpal bones. And you can see them, they're covered with the fascia. That's why they're a bit less brownish. But they're nicely visible here, the introsci muscles. 
with that we have covered the hand and so next time we'll be looking at the other parts of the upper limb thank you so much for joining us